Today on Logan Lee's Adventures is day 3 of our trip in Seoul, South Korea. I hang out with my local Korean friends, we play some squid games, and see more of this megaopolis. So behind me, this is actually the king's throne. So in there, that's where he used to sit. And then from the king's throne, he looks out into the entirety of Seoul, which is pretty cool. Look at that. All the modern buildings there. And behind us, we have mountains. Oh, this place is stunning. Okay, let's go explore. Gyeongbokgung Palace, the palace greatly blessed by heaven as they say, was the first palace built by the Joseon founder in 1395. This here is the site of Gyeongbokgung Palace where we're walking right now was at the heart of Seoul and deemed auspicious according to traditional practice of geomancy. Being on the grounds of this palace provides a glimpse into Joseon's royal culture, palace life, and architecture. The palace happens to be the largest of all five grand palaces built in the Joseon dynasty remaining in Seoul so it's gonna take us a while to just explore these really regal grounds this is the banquet building for the royal residencies which is pretty cool because you can see there's two tiers so they would host their parties here and then over here there's actually three gates and those three gates kind of represents how they uphold the social system back then. The biggest gate is where the king goes through, whereas the middle gate is for like his families, and then for the smallest gate is for all the other noble dignitaries who come and visits. Okay, we're gonna go explore the king's residence now, the sleeping quarters. This is the huge king sleeping quarters right behind me here. It's so cool because there's actually five different bedrooms just for the king. So the king rotates and changes different bedrooms depending on what he wants to sleep in that night because it's for security reasons out of being assassinated. So he doesn't want to get assassinated so keeps his haters guessing. And get this, even though the buildings are made out of wood, as you can see, down here, these little holes, that's actually the floors is made out of stone. So then they would put wood in these little fire pits here to heat up the stone floors in the winter, which is pretty cool. Like, where did I need that invention, like, back home. This is just a well, beautiful. Really beautiful just exploring and roaming around the residences here. This is the beautiful gardens for the queen. I mean, I would love to be living here, but actually not be living here back then because as the queen, she wasn't even allowed to leave the palace. Can you believe that? Because this is like for her own safety. So she lived all her life through just in the palace and in her living quarters so they built her this garden and this whole area to kind of give her like a sense of peace to explore around this is the the most of her world back then and yet she still got assassinated by japan unfortunately which is which is absolutely crazy and then eventually later later down the line the king got assassinated by japan and then the fall of the joseon dynasty but we're here now today. The leaves around the palace grounds during this time of the year is just so unbelievably gorgeous. From like, look at this red and yellow and orange, and then by the pond. It's just incredible here. It's not that this is it really looks like a painting. 
You also may be wondering, what are these colorful dresses and traditional looking outfits everyone is donning around? That's Korea's traditional garb called hanbok. And get this, if you wear them, you can go in and out of the palaces all over Seoul for free! You don't have to pay a single ticket. So locals wear their own and for visitors, there are tons of shops all around the palace grounds that rent them out. You can pick whichever color you like and styles you want. And if you're traveling with someone who wants to do it too, you both can get matching sets. I also really love that there's like monkeys on the roof here. And basically that symbolizes just how the story, the characters come from the inspiration from Journey to the West, the Monkey King, because people believe that these will be the protectors of driving, driving away the evil. And it's really cool because then different, depending on how many monkeys you have on your roof, this, does this have any monkeys? It just <laughs> means how important that building is. It's crazy walking around here to realize how this is only all these houses and historical buildings. This is only about 30% of what used to actually exist in Seoul. Because of the Japanese colonization period, a lot of these buildings were destroyed. Actually, 90% of them were destroyed and only 10% was left, which is mind-blowing. Like that's really like tragic for the history, culture of just preservation of these places. But the government has since then have been working on a long, long, long term project to restore these buildings. And by 2040, they said that they will have up to 40% of the buildings rebuilt and restored, which is pretty cool because then you can keep coming back to these palaces and discover a new side to them. How epic is this? So this station is a shoe cleaner station where you can, I guess, blow out the dust from your shoe. So after walking around the palace grounds, it's quite dusty there. It's, there's not paved roads. So here you can just blow away the dust after you exit. I love this. If you're hungry just as much as we are after all this morning exploring the main grain palace, let's go into this little noodle shop and eat. This restaurant is hidden at the deep end of an alley outside the palace and by the Bukchon Hanok village. Locals fill almost every table up here and the portions are not only hearty but huge. We got seafood salad and in it we have some shrimp. Some mussels and some homemade noodles. We got some leek and meat dumplings. Look how beautiful they're wrapped as well. Dipped in the soy sauce. Then we have bulgogi. Let's go. 
This is so cool. This is already the courtyard of the National Folk Museum of Korea. So a lot of the National Museum in Seoul are free of charge. So free admission, which is like really nice to like just run around, explore, see the different things that they have to offer. This is for when a baby turns their first birthday and then they can pick what they will become. So for example, if you pick this one, this is what they, their future will hold. They can become a judge, prosecutor, or lawyer. Interesting because in the Junction Dynasty back then, marriages were arranged. So this scene depicts the first time that the husband will ever meet his wife and vice versa. So cool because you can learn the different Korean games as well and how to play it. This is beer, B I E L beer. So the coffin is placed inside. Mm. And at least about 20 people are required to move this one, two, three, four, five, or six, seven, the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, in front and behind. So about 20 people are moving this beer and the inside coffin is placed. Okay? Mm. This, these items were, yeah, very together with the talking. Museum is so well designed. Like everything from the interactive part to all the artifacts that you can see. You really learn about the different life cycle of Korean life and also of the locals here. And also, there's a free daily English tour guide that we just went on. And that was awesome that like the mission is free and the tour guide is free too. Another cool thing about this museum is that everything, the exhibits changes. Even though they're permanent exhibit, they change to the season. So right now, the exhibit fits the autumn season with the autumn graphics. And then when it's winter or summer, it changes to that season. This is called an Ocean House, which is a exact copy, well, exactly a real house of the late Joseon period. So this would be a house for a medium income family during that time. This is the biggest Buddhist temple in the whole country, which is really cool. You can see that all the details in here, and they explore the grounds, and there's all these really bright, beautiful flowers all around to explore, and it's just in the heart of the city. I think you can go in. Yeah, okay, we're gonna take off our shoes and go in. It's funny because growing up, my parents were Buddhist, and so, I mean, I never just believed in it really or have any religious affiliations throughout all my life but during holidays my parents did take me to temples and they definitely practice buddhist rituals and traditions and things like that practices but then somewhere along the way i think when i went to university they became christians somehow i have no clue so it's really interesting because in korea there is a buddhist population and there's a devout Catholic Christian population as well so it's cool because you'll see churches all around but also a lot of temples like this dotted all around the country and of course in Seoul 
This square is just unmissable when you're in Seoul. And this statue right here is the king or the late king of Seoul of all of Korea. And he was the one who actually created the Hanju alphabet, the Korean alphabet. And this square here is where, of course, they filmed a lot of K-dramas, where a lot of like events happen, but also where one of my favorite K-dramas, Memories of Alhambra, they were like fighting here, playing the VR games here. And you can see the palace where we were there that overlooked out into the modern part of the city from all of this. And then from both sides. I feel like for other countries, huge squares like this that just goes on and on and on is like so uncharacteristic and blonde whereas here even though it's all concrete it's still like very identifiable there's still characteristic to it probably because of all the cool modern buildings all around perhaps there's the different statues different benches and still lots of greenery and then the mountains and the palace in the back and of course of all the dramas that you can recognize this square so it still has like very visual feast to it that doesn't make it look boring popular hangout space but you can see why because it's so beautiful and there's so many different places that you can sit all along the stream it's pretty cool to think that this stream was recently restored as of like 2005 which to me is not that long ago that's like quite recent this used to be all concrete and all like a highway running through it but they restored it to what it was before because in the Johnson period like different housewives would come up here to do their laundry to wash their food and things along the stream but then as Seoul started to grow and population increase all alongside of the stream little shanty towns got popped up and then that caused safety concerns to the citizens here and then eventually to make the place safer they actually poured the concrete over this to get rid of the nearby shanty town and then it was another concern about the aesthetics of the place because then this place became like so run down and like the soul of it got sucked out until because of that they restored it to the stream that we have today y'all don't judge me okay Loki bear don't even do it but i'm at mcdonald's okay so i have this thing with your room that every single time we're in a new country or it's just a country that's not our own we have to try out the mcdonald's because you know they have like very special items that you can only get in that country well in korea the menu is different here than it is in say canada or in the netherlands and the netherlands menu is different from canada so i just have to i just have to come here and try out don't worry as you've been watching we're still eating tons of awesome tasty korean food but this is one guilty pleasure, okay? Indulge with me here, indulge with me here. <laughs> First thing that we have is the bulgogi burger. Oh my god. It's literally like, it's literally bulgogi. Like the sweet savoriness of bulgogi mm. in the burger. This is actually so good, y'all. Supreme Shrimp Burger. As Asians, we love our seafood. That counts as shrimp too. Oh, wow. So shrimpy, so good. So this is Enter Stakes Wa Simini Station, which is like an all-encompassing mall inside this metro station or underground this metro station and there's lots of cafes movie theater restaurants and of course all the boutiques that we could want like this is pretty cool cafe already 
there's another cafe up there which is like a train theme cafe. It's a mixture of international stores like the North Face here, a mixture of local stores. I'm after those ones because I'm still wanting more decked out autumn stuff. I like, oh my goodness. What was, look at this. Oh my gosh. Whoa. It's a full carousel inside the mall. This is literally a robot making coffee stand. So you just order which drinks you want to try out and then the robot will make it. What? Like I said, my other hobby in Seoul is drinking. Drinking coffee, drinking... This is a coconut like slushy. I mean, just drinks. Mm. It's so good. With like actual pandan leaves in it too, like pandan chunks and coconut chunks. Now remember my local friends Andre and Seoul Wee from vlog part 1 of our Seoul adventures? Well now I'm gonna go meet up with them to have dinner and then spend the rest of the night hanging out together. You get the food. Ooh, wow, it's all steamy. Yeah. It's like boiling still. Mm, it smells so good. Okay, wait, Andre, can you explain the concept of Samyutang? All right, so you've got your entire chicken that is this hanging out. A whole own, chicken. Yeah, a small chicken, but it's whole. Still. And it's stuffed with rice, garlic, ginseng, and yes. jujube, like this right here. This is the medicinal? No, that, that's oh, standard. The okay. medicinal stuff, it's just I don't in there. think it made it into our bowl. It was yeah. just in the broth. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All your ah. rice is right there, you just take it. That's so cool. Um, for the temperature of the sun. <laughs> it takes so, it's so difficult to eat. Mm. This is your life hack. Yeah. Just take it out. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna and just leave mine in okay. so Yerun will see the full. We have our typical side dishes here, of course. Our kimchi variety store smells so good. So apparently Samyutang in this clay pot is cooked right on the stove as Andre says and so your rice is a little sticky on the bottom so you can just scoop it and take it out. Okay, here we go. Temperature of the sun. Oh, this is good. Especially for a chilly autumn day. Abalone porridge it looks so good. Very hearty. Yeah. Yeah. The jujube. Wow. It's like a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, how do I say cheers in uh, your language? Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I neglected to mention that it's slow cooked for a very long time. It falls so apart quite easy. It's all super soft, including the bones. So if oh, you like nice. marrow, you can just like numb them. He does. Very yeah. much. He always cleans out my chicken bones completely. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that was such a scrumptious dinner. After we finished eating, we went out to Myeongdong to get some snackies and just to roam around the city lights. Obviously, because it's Squid Games, we have to get one and try it out. We're actually all gonna get one and try it out. Yeah. Different shapes. Yeah. The star is hard too. Yeah, it is. And they play it around. Oh my god, okay. Which shape are you guys gonna get? Uh, you should do this, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the best one. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that's the classic one. Mm -hmm. Or the star. The star, or like, if you wanna just do it easier. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse? It wasn't in the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I don't care. Alright, okay, she's gonna get the umbrella. Oh, no, yes, you're gonna, gonna get the umbrella. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I'm gonna get the umbrella because yeah. that's the classic. Yeah. Classic. Get... Which one are you guys getting? Wait, how much are they? They get all mine. They get them. I don't even get needles. What's no, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, <laughs> this is kind of bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I have. 
I don't have enough knives for everyone. So. Can I use a knife or is that cheating? That's, That's cheating. cheating. No, but it, I'll use That's it like a needle. Cheating. No! <laughs> then why do you need to use it? What? Then why do you need to use it? What if I have a needle? Can I use a needle? Nope. No. Oh. We're all on same, uh, people. same level. So same level. Squid game? Yes. Okay. So good. Right. Season two Wait, is coming. We need a timer. This, oh. this can't just be like all free. Right. Wow. Okay. There's if a... only someone had a wristwatch that <laughs> had a timer. Ten minutes. Yeah, ten once minutes? it was, I think, yeah, 10 minutes sounds ten reasonable. Minutes sounds 10 reasonable, minutes. Right? Okay, yeah, just after that, scratch it out, right? Just yeah, like, without yeah, breaking it. It's yeah. very brittle. You're gonna yeah. break it. Oh, so be careful. Cute. Yeah. Uh, be oh, go. See, Jack. If you crack it, you die. <laughs> Actually, so you can crack the outer parts, you just cannot crack the inner shape. Ah. Oh my god, you should. <gasps> You already? No, it's okay. No, the outer part. Yeah, you the outer part. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's... <laughs> no, the other side. The other side. <laughs> oh, shit. This is hard. I watched it too long ago. <laughs> Ooh, it tastes like uh, I broke it. caramel. Yeah. You have, like, an easy one. I broke it. Oh, already? Already. I'm really kidding. I just pressed here, and then oh, it shit. broke yeah, like, oh, like that. Oh, fuck. You're dead. Oh, I have a new strategy. I have a new strategy. I know I'm gonna close my strategy. We're good. Oh. <laughs> Somebody makes fun of me because I make that noise when I get startled. Me too! And she's like, that's an Ajushi noise. That's an old man noise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she, that's what my lovely wife says. Oh, because you do sound like it. The surface below or the thing you're pressing into it? Really sad. Oh. You have to cry. Oh. Was there a prize for cutting out the shape? Like, did you get one more? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> what, if, what if you kept? What if you were so good and you just kept cutting out the shape? Would you get an okay. unlimited supply? Yeah, you're gonna have like rotten teeth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Just sugar and flour. Yeah. No flour. Oh no flour. Wait, sugar and baking, baking soda. soda. Oh, baking soda. Yeah. But it tastes like caramel. Still good though, eh? Yeah. So I don't know what the baking soda does, but it oh it creates lots of bubbles. Mm -hmm. So you put it in this little honestly it looks like what you would cook heroin in, like the little <laughs> a little metal thing that you put over the flame. It would look sketchy in another country, but here it's fine. Uh, you put sugar there, and then mm -hmm. you heat it up, and then you add the baking soda, and then the magic happens. Mm. It fizzles, it gets bubbles, mm -hmm. caramelizes. And it has, it's like food color, <laughs> we call this food snack, literally. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, you, you never told me that. I'm oh, sorry. What the hell? <laughs> That's all for day three in Seoul, Logi Bears, but there's more fun in South Korea's capital city coming our way. So don't forget to leave me a comment below, give this video a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Because in the next vlog, we get into more fun things only locals would do in Seoul.